Welcome back our dear viewers and as we have said at the beginning of the show that we are going to talk about how to reach optimism and inner peace and uh, how we can uh, overcome our fears and uh, our uh, feeling of pessimism uh, that would be our topic for discussion in today's edition of the breakfast show with our dear guest mr munir shazli holistic life coach good morning sir. good morning now this is quite an hard thing to be able to achieve to achieve inner peace and to be have the ease of mind now is this achievable and is it uh, through training uh, is it through changing our way of thinking how can that be achieved well it's at the very beginning it's always possible. The whole idea is that it needs some work. Mm. I think primarily if we talk about uh, achieving inner peace, there are lots of ways where you can do that. One of them is meditation, for example. Meditation mm. helps a lot in this process. Mm. Other things could be, uh, be, because actually through meditation you can control your mind. Mm. It's very difficult to achieve inner peace without controlling your mind. Mm. The whole idea is about how to deal with the mind, how to use the mind as opposed to letting your mind use you in that sense. Mm. Mm. Uh, Mr. Munir, uh, as um, a person who is um, having uh, some problems and difficulties in life, as a normal person with all the, uh, the challenges that we are facing, and sometimes we are just uh, stuck with ourselves and maybe we, we are a, a bit negative or a bit stressed, what are the tips here that you can give us in order to uh, control our minds and negative thoughts? Well, there are always tips that I can give, but then to tell you the truth, I always feel that the most important aspect when it comes to having a positive outlook in life is basically related to working on the roots of the, of the issues. Mm. From my observation, from my work, usually people who have n one of two main issues, they're more prone to depression and to see life in a pessimistic way. Mm. The first one is related to not being able to handle certain death in their families. Mm. Because traumas. Traumas, yeah, mm. and particularly death. Mm. Because death is one of the very big things that shakes the system. Indeed. And in general, one of the problems that we have here is basically that we usually try to deal with, with death quickly. We just don't allow people to grieve. The grieving process is a very important aspect when you're dealing with death. And without going through the grieving process in, a right, mm. in the right way or giving it time, so to say, basically what happens is that we carry this grief within us so it's very difficult it's like it's like a cup and if the cup is three quarters full then basically anything that you you drop in it even if it's small automatically would lead us to be depressed or to have a pessimistic outlook of life that's the first thing second thing and this is a very important aspect as well is the relationship with the parents from my observations i am yet to mm. see anybody who's <laughs> depressed whose relation who has a good relationship with their parents Hmm. It's like the parents are the roots for everyone. So you have one root that is the mother and the other root is the father. As long as you are rooted, i.e. like connected to them in the right way and you're at peace with them and your heart is open to them, automatically what happens is that your capacity to see life in a positive way is there. Hmm. That's the root. Hmm. Now, but life is becoming very stressful, especially if you are like... Uh, the uh, bearer or uh, the caretaker of the family and then you get all these responsibilities that you're supposed to do so you don't tend to think about the good stuff you're always thinking about what you have to do that I have to get money I have to do this that even going to work sometimes can be very stressful through the traffic jams uh, the, yeah. the heat everything that's around us so how can we control that? How can we overcome even the pressures that are already there existing around us? I think in general it's related to how you view whatever that you're going through. Mm. For example, if you're walking down the streets, the three of us, and I'm in a good mood, automatically I'll be able to see the clouds and the birds singing in the sky. And if you're not in a good mood, then most likely you're, you're, you'll be seeing the traffic jam and all the people shouting and mm. so on. So the idea is... Once you have the outlook, the a positive outlook at some level, automatically everything <laughs> else, you see it in a different way. So in general, you start to work with yourself at the very beginning because how you see life is a reflection of what's Your inside age. of you. Uh, so if you work on yourself to start with, everything else becomes very different. Even going to work, for example, while it seems to be very stressful, but if you're going to something or if you're doing something that you enjoy, your stress level or the experience of mm. going to work with the traffic jam 
will be very different than if you're going to work that you don't like and if you're not happy in your life in general or if you're doing something that you feel uh, at some level obliged to do as opposed to something that you do and enjoy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, sir, of course, as you have kindly mentioned, that um, we should get over our traumas and uh, all the, this, but sometimes we are just um, stuck with our negative thoughts of our anger from, as you said, the, the traffic, the problems at work, the daily life um, problems. How can we get out of the hook? How can we start to control our brain, which sometimes do give us some negative vibes maybe and our thoughts which are somehow negative i think one it, of the it's very quite complicated I, I agree and it's not it's not an easy thing but in general like i told you if you work on your roots to start with that would be one thing mm. the other aspect is to train your mind the problem mm. with the mind is that the mind is a very strong tool mm. you can use it for your benefit or it can drag you behind it i i always see the mind as um, like a wild dog Mm -hmm. So if you tame the mind, you can use the dog and you can use it in things that you enjoy. You can be a very good friend. But if the wild dog becomes your leader, then mm -hmm. automatically you just, you, you, you always find it difficult to be able to control it and so on. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea is once you, allow, you train your mind to see the positive side of things as opposed to the negative side of things, it's all about, like, for example, I have a bad thought here and there's a possibility of having a good thought here mm. so instead of focusing on the bad thought and dwelling on it all the time mm -hmm. one of the very easy things that you mm -hmm. can do is you just shift your attention mm -hmm. and this is a quality that usually you gain more and more uh, control over with meditation mm. so shifting your attention makes a big difference mm -hmm. and then you need to be very careful of whatever that you get yourself exposed to every day because mm -hmm. most of us we tend to um, like get ourselves so much stuck in bad news or uh, things that we have no control over. Yeah. Like, for example, you cannot control whatever that's happening in the world. If something happens somewhere, you can be aware of it, but you don't need to, to, to make this your responsibility and you don't need to think what will happen uh, for those poor kids or what will happen for those yeah. blah, blah, blah. The whole idea is that whatever that you are in control of or whatever that you can have access to, that you can make a difference, mm then uh, make a difference with, I mean, then you need to focus on as mm. opposed to thinking about things that you have no mm. access to. Now, but how can we create a balance between, because being extra optimistic can become, you can become a dreamer <laughs> and still if, and being over realistic, you can be optimist, uh, pessimistic. Pessim yeah. So how can we create a balance so that you're neither pessimist n nor a dreamer? I think your question is very valid because basically lots of people preach the idea of being very positive and positivity and so on and I think positivity is overrated. I think it's very important to know that life is what it is and your, your job is to deal with it the way it is. You can change the things that you can change, mm -hmm. primarily things within you and how you perceive them as opposed to think, I mean, if I wake up every day and think, oh, today is going to be a great day and blah, 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 and so on, what will happen is I'll always be disappointed because actually disappointments usually come with expectations mm -hmm. and being too optimistic means having too yeah. many expectations. So how can we reach here the balance? How can we have a balanced ideas and balanced life? Because as you kindly mentioned, that sometimes when we are too optimistic and we are too dreamy, um, we have high dreams and not, sometimes reachable, we get disappointed. And on the other side, if we are too optimistic, uh, uh, sorry, too pessimistic, and uh, we are having negative thoughts, uh, we get depressed. So how can we reach the, the middle uh, ground here? I, I think it always starts from within as well. I mean, when, once you, you work on yourself, when, once you are, <coughs> sorry, once you are more at peace, automatically your capacity to handle life the way it is, is, is becomes bigger. Mm. So it's all about being able to handle yeah. how, what life throws on you. Yeah. And there's another thing that's very important is to <coughs> stop labeling things. The problem with us is the labels that we put on things. Like, for example, <coughs> people think, okay, no, fine, I'm depressed or I am uh, whatever, or this economy is going to... I mean, the big labels that, that we always use are not always very... Um, are always counterproductive. When you stop labeling things and you take things as they are, I mean, if you're having a problem, you're having a problem. Mm. It's not the end of the world. If, you're, if, there is some, if something is not going well, then it means that this part is not going well. 
if you failed, let's say, for example, a test, that does not make you a failure. It makes you somebody who tried something and it didn't work out now. So one of the major important things is to stop labeling things negatively. This is a very important aspect. I mean, you don't label them positively. You just put them in where they are. An experience is just an experience. It's not good or bad. It's just an experience. You can learn from it, so it becomes a good thing. Or you can say, why me? I'm a victim of circumstances. Then it's a bad experience. But without this and that, it's just an experience. <laughs> now, you've mentioned that uh, meditation would help in that and training the mind. But what other things can we do other than meditation to help us train our mind? And are there certain foods or activities that would make you happier? I think what's, what's very, um, I mean, one of the very important aspects with that is, uh, in general, from my observation, when we eat a lot of meat, specifically mm. red meat, mm. we become more agitated. So mm. those, those who eat more like vegetables and so on, mm. usually are more relaxed. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. Another thing, it's related to eliminating stresses from your life. I mean, for example, like I talk to some of my friends and, and they have, um, they see life as a very difficult life and everything needs to be a struggle and so on. <laughs> and then you go to their houses and then you see like posters of crying babies and uh, you see uh, um, uh, lots of dust everywhere and so on. So partially living in a place where everything is to your own liking. I mean, it doesn't have to be too tidy or too untidy. The idea is whatever that makes you feel comfortable, mm -hmm. just make, make sure that you're surrounding yourself with good, good atmosphere and with good people as well. I mean, mm -hmm. if, you, if sitting with certain people makes you depressed, don't sit with them. Mm -hmm. if, if going somewhere does not make you, or if you feel they have so many obligations, you need to question, mm -hmm. do I really need to do that? Do I need, do I need to go to funerals every day? Should we need some kind of a list here for uh, what we should do or how can we overcome our um, sometimes the fact that we are stuck with many things or many people. I think, I think one of the very important things is to try not or stop trying to please everyone. At some level, people try to feel that they're good. So they do a lot of things out of obligations or out of what mm. people might say and so on. I think it's very important to attend to yourself first. There's a very nice saying that says, charity starts from home. So in general, if you attend to yourself first, if you make yourself at peace, your capacity to help others will increase. But then if your day is, I mean, like torn between having obligations to do this and having to do that and doing this because mm. this will make someone else's happy and so on, without attending to yourself, then your you life in general, something. it's just, you'll always feel that you're missing out on something. But that would lead us to talking about social pressure. Yeah. And actually, it's very difficult to let go of what you're saying, that you don't care what the people would say, or you don't care how, uh, how your family or a member or a friend will, uh, will view you, your, uh, your image. Because eventually, sometimes the reflection of your image uh, projects on you. So how can we get over that? I think I, I didn't. I didn't mean that you should not care. I said oh, what I meant was basically because that... Because they you, will pressure you in a sense. Of course. But then they, if their job is to pressure you, how to handle the pressure is entirely yours. Mm -hmm. It's like, for example, some people are used to sending you on guilt trips, for example. Mm -hmm. So if you decide to agree and go with them, then automatically that's, what, that's what's going to happen. So if somebody keeps on blaming you all the time, no matter what you're going to do, they will always blaming, they will always blame you. Then one of the things that you need to do is just to maybe mm -hmm. just try to control it or eliminate the source. Okay. Now, now, now there are people yeah. who, that you cannot let go of, mm -hmm. primarily your family and your parents in particular. Mm -hmm. But there are people who might not be as important to you as much. So maybe your interaction with them could decrease. As for your parents, it's how you perceive them as well. If I perceive everything that my mother tells me when she blames me uh, that, it's some, that something is wrong with me, then basically I'll, eventually I'll, I'll be depressed. But then if I perceive it as she's doing this out of love, then maybe it's not going to be as hard for me to accept The thing it. is, from what I've noticed um, with some of my friends, is it gets harder because, like, for instance, my kids are going to this school and their friends are going to that school, but this school is too expensive for me. They did this birthday and I have to do that birthday. This, she's wearing this outfit. We're going this, this, there this summer. 
So sometimes even the, the, the little things can pressure you due to, it, to the economic pressure. How can you deal with that? The idea of comparison, even sometimes between brothers or sisters, look at this lifestyle versus that lifestyle. This is something now with, with the modern life that's becoming more and more vivid among us. How can we overcome that? That I agree. But then what I always tell my clients and my friends is that once you stop judging your parents, for what they did with you, automatically what happens is that your capacity to deal with your children is much bigger. So basically, those who label their parents and they think of them as they have done this and they have done that and so on, they always pressure themselves to be better than their parents. So there's a lot of pressure on them to send them to the best schools or to buy them whatever and so on. So basically, the more you are at peace, and that's, that's why I said dealing with parents is very important, the more you are at peace with your parents, your capacity to deal with your children is much bigger. Mm. And, the, and what's very important, and this is one of the things that I've noticed, people always get stuck on the idea of sending the kids to the best schools or to give them the best education or buy them the best toys and so on. But children, they don't remember that that much. What children remember is that the quality time that my parents spend with me and how much of love my parents managed to give me. So this is, this is a priority. I think it's very important to set our priorities straight. When children feel that the parent is doing their job or they're, they're doing their best to them and they're connecting with them, their interest in so many other things will be a lot less. Indeed. Uh, Mr. Munir Shazli, Holistic Life Coach, uh, thank you very much, sir, for uh, your uh, precious uh, tips here and for your uh, input. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, of course, now it's time with this uh, beautiful output, output, the output of optimism. Yes, I think indeed. it's time to wrap the episode. Indeed. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Munir. And thank you very much, uh, Raja. And with that, our dear viewers, we come to the end of this edition of The Breakfast Show. I would like to thank very much my dear colleague, Rasha Mati. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mahisti. And till we meet again with a new crew on Breakfast Show, it's goodbye.